All right, I'd like to welcome you guys to this week's video. Um, last week we talked a little bit about the uh, tackle we're using for sand bass and calicos on deeper structure. And uh, this week I went out and shot some video of uh, how to go about approaching spots and doing some different presentations. Um, I have to preface this by saying uh, local fishing is really horrible right now. And uh, for whatever reason, this is the worst, uh, worst wintertime bass fishing I've seen on the coast in at least 10 years, maybe longer. We're but I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't think it's a, there's a lack of fish. I just think that there's so much bait in our local waters right now that it's almost impossible to get through it. I mean, I fished from uh, basically below Hampton Beach to off Long Beach and just ran into acres and acres of bait everywhere the entire time. And one of the problems with that for bass fishing anyway is that it, uh, when there's that much bait around, the fish don't tend to aggregate on a spot so much they spread out and feed in open water, which makes them fairly hard to target. Um, that being said, you know, we did, uh, went out and caught a fish, a couple fish, and uh, when I intended to go out and shoot this video, I was really hoping to go out and pull up on spots and waylay the five to six pounders and just be like, you know, like a lot of the videos you watch on the internet. But those are more like, uh, you know, uh, just a compilation video of a great day or a great few days. This video here is more about what you should be doing on the water to uh, put yourself in a position to catch fish if they're actually biting. But um, one of the things I wanted to cover, you know, I've got three little video clips uh, giving three different scenarios, but uh, the first thing I want to cover is when you guys are going out there on your own boat, you really know, need to learn how to drive the boat over spots, over small spots accurately, and you really need to learn how your GPS works and all those, and what you're seeing on your GPS in relation to what you're seeing on your fish finder. I tried to go over it in a video, and I'm not sure that I... Uh, uh, had the time to make it completely clear, but um, so I just want to give you a little preface to the video. So when you're setting up your fish finder or your if you have a plotter, separate plotter, I run two units. I run two seven inch units. I use one for the fish finder, one for the uh, the plotter. Um, in a video, I use a split screen because I couldn't film both at the same time. If you have one, that's fine as well. If you're fishing structure spots and you're trying to position your boat on spots, I highly, highly recommend using a north up orientation on your chart. That means the chart stays in the same position and the boat turns as you turn the boat. I've gone out with guys who have it heads up, which is the boat is always straight, the chart's spinning around it, and uh, the delay involved with that is gonna make it very difficult to get on small spots. So um, north up, if you're not using that now, I recommend getting used to it and figuring it out. It gets a lot easier to figure out how to go right and left with the boat and other things like that. Um, the other thing I want to mention, and this is important, so um, you need to know how to zoom in correctly on uh, your chart when you're sitting up on smaller spots so that you can get an idea of where you are in the distance involved from the spot. Uh, when I'm driving to an area, I'll zoom out so I can find the area I'm going to, and as I get close to the spot, I will zoom in and they have a little range finder at the bottom that changes size that has different distances and I go for the 200 foot one and there will be you know probably three settings on any of these things for 200 feet. One will be like this big, 200 feet, 200 feet, 200 feet. I go on the, on the biggest 200 foot, the setting right before it goes down to 100 foot range. Um, I've tried all kinds of different settings and I found that when fishing bass spots that is the Best setting to uh, be able to maneuver your boat around properly. If you go too zoomed in, um, it's very easy to lose track of the spot. If you're too zoomed out, um, you might think you're on the spot, but you're not. So that 200, the, the setting, the highest, the widest, closest 200 before it goes to 100 foot is what works for me. Try that out. If you have some changes, you want to try something different, you can do that. Um, the second thing, third thing, whatever I'm saying here, you need to learn how to move your boat along very slowly. And that means just, so here's neutral, click, that's in gear. Not any gas, not in just click, just so it's right over the thing. And your boat will go one or two miles an hour. If your boat's a light boat and it tends to go faster than that, you need to start popping it back out of gear and just nudging it ahead. These spots aren't going to move, but the small ones, if you're going too fast, you're going to miss them. And once you stop on these spots and you meter the spot you want to drop on, 
You can't just take the boat out of gear, you'll keep sliding. On Jimmy's boat, we call it the Everglades slide. That boat will go 200 yards sometimes when you pull it out of gear for whatever reason. So what I do is if I'm gonna pull up on a spot and I see fish I wanna drop on, I'll drop my lure and I'll immediately click the boat into reverse. Just like I had clicked into gear, I click in reverse. I'm not gonna get in reverse, I just click it back in reverse and I watch my line sink. It'll go from like back behind the boat to straight up and down and I take the boat out of gear. Now I'm stopped directly over the spot. Um, something else I wanted to mention along those same lines. Oh, one other thing. If you're sitting up on a spot and you miss the spot, which happens a lot, especially if there's wind or current pushing you off and it's a small spot, if you try and circle back on the spot from the position that you have your boat in, you're going to end up driving in a big circle around the, uh, around the spot, and it's very difficult to get back over it by just turning the wheel hard over and trying to go back, because the boat doesn't turn that tight. It makes kind of a loop around it. So if you miss a spot or you don't run it over the first time, what I do is I'll drive 100 feet away from it, turn the boat around, and line up again, and drive over it again. And uh, that's a lot better than wasting your time driving around a big circle, because you'll end up with your, your GPS waypoint the big line of cotton candy around it from just circling around the spot. Um, same way this first video, I'm uh, pulling up to the uh, Huntington Beach Artificials, which is something I would consider a superstructure spot. Uh, it's not a super big one, but there's, you know, you have to drive around and find fish there, and that's what we did in this first video. So uh, follow along and check it out. All right, so we're uh, down here in Huntington Beach. We're pulling up on the Huntington AR, as you can see here. I've got some waypoints, but with the new charting stuff, you don't really even need the waypoints anymore because we're going to go it. And as I get up close to it, I want to zoom into about 200 feet on the little uh, the legend there that tells you what, what you're looking at here. And um, so I just have the boat going pretty slow here, three and a half knots as I cruise up. And as I get closer, I'm going to just slide it back to where it's just in gear and uh, a couple hundred feet to go. So, yeah, I haven't needed waypoints with the new charts like this, uh, this uh, Simrad chart here. You don't really need the waypoints anymore, but I have them on there already, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Cruising up to the spot here. And you know, the tendency is you wanna go a little faster, but it's best to just go slow. And try and get in a straight line when you're lining up where your spot is. You know, if you can make some maneuvers as you get a little closer but try and line it up on a straight shot so that you run over straight. Now as I'm sliding out here, I just pull the boat out of gear so I'm gonna slow down a bit and uh, go about, you know, one or two knots, just kicking it in and out of gear. And now I'm sliding up onto the uh, spot here. I'm gonna look for the spot to show up on the uh, fish finder. So, I should start to see it here in a second. Now as I get close again, I'm just pull the boat out of gear so I slide. We're just going in and out of gear here. There's uh, no reason to go fast. You can see it's starting to get a little bit hard bottom right here. You should start seeing the spot on the meter. There it's starting to show a little bit. That, that, re that return you're getting on the bottom, that's showing you're on hard bottom. So now I'm just uh, cruising around on the spot looking for signs of anything. A lot of times you don't mark a whole lot, but the bass will be on it. So I'm just cruising along here, driving over this hard bottom. You can see how hard the bottom is here by the uh, the return you get below the line. And I'm just cruising down through this zone here. This is a kind of a bigger spot. So I talked about before, you have to kind of drive around until you see some fish. So isolated spot, you just pull up and stop. But you can see there's a pretty long little area right here. And I'm just cruising along it right now. There's a little mark on the bottom. Not a whole lot, but uh, you can see the bottom seems to be going up and down, but it's just a swell. It's a good size swell today. So now I'm starting to see some bait, some stuff on the bottom here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop and give this one a shot. Matt's gonna drop down. So Matt is uh, fishing the slug on the lead head. Here, it's dropping it straight down. I have the boat in reverse to stop my forward momentum. You want your line to drop straight down. Let's see if we get a bite. He's just fishing that eight inch slug on a two ounce lead head. Get a bite? So. Burn it up off the bottom, kick it back in free spool. It's an aggressive uh, motion we're using here. 
So, trying to get these sand baths for Calico's reactors. Be still marking them? No. No? Okay. No, I'm just marking the bait though. I'm not expecting a fl fl flamethrower here because it is kind of middle of winter and cold water. But uh, this is kind of the deal here. You can also cast it out a little bit and let it sink, fish at the 45 degree angle. There you go. So, yeah, it took a little bit of time there, but uh, this is pretty much the deal. And uh, pretty easy way to catch a sand bass for calico. The reaction bite. There we go. Nice little sand bass to start off the morning. What showed how you got that? See, that's a small fish, but it got that hook because it's on that slug bait with the uh, free swinging hook. So that's basically how you fish that bait. Just drop it down, burn it up off the bottom, drop it back in the freeze pool. It's marking now. Marking good? All right, let's yeah. uh, see if we can get another one. Sadly, that small bass we caught is the only one we got on video. Like I said, it was very tough fishing, but we did get a couple more bites while I was shooting, but uh, we whipped on them. These fish were committed to small bait. They were just tail biting the the 5 inch video set up a reaction, not really, uh, not really getting on it. But in this video here, I'm pulling up to a spot called the Rock Barge, uh, which is near the Heighton Artificials. It's actually the barge that they used when they built the artificials. They dumped the rocks off it and then they sank the barge. So that sunken barge is a standalone spot. Um, the spot's in fairly shallow water as far as this stuff goes. So on, those, on spots, let me say less than 60 feet of water, if possible, I like to fish them from the side, which means I'm going to use my plotter and my relation to the structure to stop off to the side of it. So I'm not going to mark it on the up and down. If you have side imaging, you can project that. You'll see where the spot is. But in that case, we're casting a lure to a spot that we're not sitting over. And a lot of times you'll get bites on picky fish um, just because they don't see the shadow of the boat directly over them. So here's that video. Okay, so I pull them into the spot called the Rock Barge. I'm not marking it because it's off the bow here. You can see I got Matt up here casting towards it with a swim bait. So he's just letting it sink on a slack line. A lot of times you don't need to be around top of these spots to uh, get bit. You get bit better if you stay away from it. See if this one works out here. Five inch VAOs on a one ounce boxer head. technique allows you to cover a little bit more water when fishing straight up and down with the slug wood. But, oh, there you go. Oh, missed it. All right, finally, um, in this last video, I'm, I'm, you know, it being the wintertime, there being lobster gear out there. Most of the lobster gear that you find in isolated clumps is sitting on spots. And if you fish out of Long Beach or any of the other harbors, you might see long lines of lobster gear, like outside of the break wall and stuff. That's not on spots. But if you see two or three buoys closely clustered together, there's usually a spot right there. And on the charts you have right these days, the C-map chart on my Simrat, it's very obvious that there's a spot. And what's nice about having that lobster gear on there is that you drive up to that spot and stop short of it and cast your lure onto it, just like you were with the spot you stopped next to. But when you're getting starting to learn um, how to relate to these smaller spots, having that lobster gear there is very helpful because you'll you'll notice how the boat position changes where you may not think you're drifting. There's no wind or anything. You might be drifting with current. Other things might be happening. You may think you're stopping your boat, but you're still sliding forward. So you can use the, the lobster gear as a visual reference 
in um, how you're setting up the boat. And once, pay attention to you know how your boat moves once you stop and which direction it's going and what's happening. You know, if you pull it out of gear and you back it down and then you start, you know, you go to fish and now you're suddenly in that lobster gear, um, your boat's not stopped completely. Or uh, there's current when you don't expect there to be current and that current may orient those fish differently like we talked about uh, in a couple weeks ago. So these are all cues you can take. So, you know, it's winter time, fishing's probably gonna be slow. Go out there, find some lobster gear, you know, see how your boat relates to it when you get out there. And I mean, in the old days, we used to have a marker buoy uh, before we had these good uh, chart plotters and stuff. And uh, we would throw a marker buoy on a spot and then use that to reference that spot. Um, all those things are uh, very helpful. But anyway, here's that video. All right, so this spot we're fishing here has some lobster gear on it. So we don't actually need to drive up onto the spot. We know where to cast to. So that's good, just throw a little swim bait onto the spot here throughout the bow mat there's a ton of bait around today though so it's going to make for a tougher fishing maybe but he's just sinking that swim bait out i'm gonna back the boat up here so we'll drive completely past it and he's just watching to see if he gets a bit on the sink Sticking on a slack line, paying attention to what his bait's doing. And once he hits the bottom, he's just going to slow roll it back. There was a bite. Short bite. He's just been short biting the bait the last week or so. Well, like I said, guys, you know, I was really hoping to go out and have some uh, really good fishing, but it just wasn't meant to be. And that, that you know, just, it happens to the best of us and <laughs> the worst of us. But uh, I hope you guys learned something about this, uh, this stuff and, you know, uh, go out there and do some practicing when it's tough. And uh, maybe it'll set you up for having good success this summer. But, uh, hey, we got good weather in the forecast this weekend, so uh, get out there and do some fishing.